Hey, good day, everybody. I am Connor with Honor, Connor McIver. Welcome to the Fat Torching Over 50 podcast. I want to get into being on autopilot and how to break away from that with regard to the addictive nature and your addictive process. Now, of course, you're not your addictions, right? You're not your thoughts. You are totally separate from that. And you can start studying work by Eckhart Tolle, T-O-L-L-E, if memory serves, to get a better grasp of what I'm talking about. But what I heard yesterday him say in one of his meditations really came through to me. And right now, let me get let me let me throw this out there. I'm not a medical doctor. I'm not a medical professional. I am a guy that torched 135 pounds of body fat and has been able to keep, keep it off for at least a year and a half. And I'm continuing through that addictive process because I still have fights occasionally. And I also have a group of people that I keep in contact with and try to hold accountable and just give them love and adoration and let them know that they're strong enough to do it. And that includes you. So if you're one of those people, DM me or message me and I'll get you on my list and I'll harass you from time to time. Just checking in and seeing if you're doing well, the work. This is what I understood this to be, you know, so you're preparing to go out on a date or you're preparing and you might have to go back a little bit in time, but let's, let's say that was the case. You would do all you, you would elevate your preparing to go on a date higher than just being on autopilot, I would assume. So you would actually work at getting ready to go on the date. There would be things that you would be planning, maybe a place to go out to eat, maybe uh, the transportation situation, maybe what you're going to do after. But then you would also prep yourself. You would take time and potentially, you know, shave and manicure and do some of that stuff, you know, get your body into, uh, you know, it's, it's perfect form, whatever that may be. And of course, clothing. So there's a lot to it. The same thing if you're planning on going camping. You're going to get all prepared. You're going to sit down and formulate maybe some sort of a plan. You're going to figure out what you're going to do. Same thing if you're going to go on a job interview. You're not going to go in cold. If you're going to go on a job interview to Johnson & Johnson, you're probably going to do some kind of research about the company. If you make the cut and get past the gatekeepers, then you're going to have things that they're going to want to talk about. And they might go into the founding of the company and ask you what you know about it. And if you say, well, I don't know anything. I'm just here. You know, it's not going to work. So this is what I would suggest. This is what I understood this to be. Most of us do things mindlessly. We do it without thinking. We are kind of walking around like a bunch of zombies making unconscious movements in the world. And that includes to what's causing us to be how we don't want to be. So if we are fat, we are doing something to continue being fat. If we are addicted to alcohol, we are continuing to drink alcohol. If we are drinking alcohol, we are continuing to drink alcohol, and we are staying an alcoholic, right? And and if we are a food addict, again, you have that. If you are addicted to other forms of drugs, uh, marijuana, whatever it may be, if you have that addictive nature, most of the time you're just doing it. You're just doing it. It's it's part of it. I I remembered, you know, you, you, if you're a wine drinker, let's say, and that's that's and you're addicted to it, and you're drinking, you know, every day. And again, there's no amount of alcohol or wine or anything that's good for you. It's all it's all a toxin. Let's just get that out of the way. You research that. You know, there, there's a lot of studies that seem to have been paid for by. Well, the people that are manufacturing it that say it's healthy for you in moderation, I'm not seeing moderation at all in anything. I think it's just bad. If you tried to bring that stuff to market today, good luck with it. However, you know, can you imagine bring, going to the shark tank and saying, hey, we got this, this stuff, we're going to call it alcohol, and this is what it does. Oh my gosh, yeah, perfect. I'm sure they would buy it. Moving back. So it's on autopilot. You get home in the evening... You have, you have that long day at work. You're talking to your spouse or your cat or the television or whatever it may be. And you grab that bottle of wine you bought, you know, your six pack from Ralph's or Vaughn's or whatever it was. So you get the discount. So you start opening the crown of the wine. You cut the top. 
you know, you kind of look at the bottle a little bit. The bottle's cold to the touch if it's a red wine or whatever it may be. been sitting in your house, so it feels good against your skin. And you plow that cork remover in there, the screw, right, or whatever it is. Maybe you got something fancy. Maybe it's one of those air things. But either way, this is your ritual. You're just going through it. You got the glass sitting there on the counter ready to go. You pour the wine in the glass. Maybe you do a little swirl. Maybe you do a little smell. But you then the first taste hits your mouth and you're done. But it's all pretty much on autopilot. There was no planning. You know, the planning, you're at the supermarket buying bread and meat, and now you're deciding, you know what, I need to get, I need to refill on alcohol. There's really no planning. You're going and looking at the alcohol. You're probably buying what you bought before. And if not, you're just doing a potpourri of different types of wines, but they all have the same effect. So now you're going through the, the autopilot. That's the same thing with other drinks. Vodka, you got that bottle in the freezer. Let's say that's that's your poison. You got that beer, you open that can when you get home. Maybe you have somebody that opens it for you and hands it to you as you walk in the door. That's lovely. But again, this is all on autopilot and you just start, you do it very mindlessly. Then moving over to other drugs of choice, even food, you're out there driving around and the next thing you know, you're in a jack in the box drive through or McDonald's drive through and here you are. I took a lot of vitamins this morning, so I apologize. That they're they're kind of uh, creating a little bit of gases. Okay, so but you're in the drive-through all of a sudden, and boom, you're ordering your you know what your favorite thing, and you're finishing it in the car as you finish the drive to work, or go back to work from lunch, or leaving the day coming home before you get home, so nobody knows. Whatever it is, you're just kind of doing it mindlessly. This is what Eckhart Tolle said, and at least this is how I absorbed it, and how it really kind of hit home elevate that. If you're going to do it, don't leave it on that level of autopilot. If you're going to do something that harms your body, you might as well bring it up to somewhere on a spiritual kind of plane or somewhere in a, of a religious experience, somewhere where you're preparing to do it, somewhere that's a much higher level than where you are. And in doing so, and in elevating your addictive nature to that higher level, it's going to cause you pause. You're going to have a more, more of a moment to look at this because now this is almost a tribute to your God or whatever it is you follow, your energy, your life's force, whatever it is. Now you're moving it to a much higher level. So now it's sitting in front of you and you're, 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 you're looking at it and you're completely aware of what you're doing. So you'll pull out of the drive through right? You're like, oh, wait, 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 no, no, no. This needs to be, I need to prepare for this. Like I'm going on a date. I mean, I need to, if I'm going to go do this, I need to dress up and get all fancies on and get out there and go do this. If I'm going to do the wine thing, it's not going to be, you know, it's, it's going to be maybe not having wine in the house will elevate it to that higher level. Now, okay, now I'm going to, I need to go to the supermarket. So I'm going to go to the supermarket and now I'm going to look around and, and I'm not going to just buy that wine that I bought. I'm going to buy something better or I'm going to buy something more advanced or something maybe and I'm I'm going to go through that process but 9 times out of 10 I know what's going to end up happening you're going to be like what am I doing it's almost too much work now it's almost not worth it well it is not worth it but you got to find that you got to find that solution yourself but it's it's going to become tiring. Same thing with the cigarette. Just don't light up. Just don't stick it in your mouth and go, or just don't put the vape pen in your mouth and go. Make it make it that experience. You know, at five o'clock, you're meeting your vape pen, or at six o'clock, you're meeting your cigarette. You know, w wait for it. And, and then when you do it, do it consciously. So when you tip back that glass of vodka, straight, <laughs> What is that like? Is it like honey to your throat and to your mouth? Or is it like drinking bleach? Same thing with wine. Is it really tasty? Or would a, a I hate to say it, would a Pepsi be better or a Coke? I mean, they're not going to have that same dopamine dump. But that's what we want to get away from, the dopamine dump. That's what's holding us and holding our feet and everything else to the fire. That's what is continuing that addictive nature. So we want to back away from that. So maybe 
maybe possibly if you make your experience at a higher level, if you're going to take the time, I mean, it's your life. It's your time. You only got a certain amount. You might as well make it special. If you're going to continue to smoke or drink or eat way too much food, bad food, whatever it is, if you're going to continue to do it, raise it up higher, honor it more. And when you do, I bet your dollars to donuts, I love that, dollars to donuts, I bet your dollars to donuts that you're going to pull back a little bit. And over time, it's going to stop because you're not doing anything on autopilot anymore. Autopilot is the ego, folks. That's what's pulling you into this realm. Your ego, and you are not your ego. Your ego is totally something different. This all comes back from the lizard brain days prior to us having this more developed rationale and that, uh, that frontal lobe. It's still driving you. Your body doesn't want to die. After you become addicted to something and you start to quit, it's painful for the body. Plus, you got the ego chiming in saying, oh, no, no, they say if you quit this, you might die. And then they say you're going to need professional help. This is all being fed to us, folks. You know, of course, ask your doctor and all this other stuff. You got to make sure you do that. But at the end of the day, I don't know. If you drink alcohol, are you going to die if you stop drinking it? If you adjust, if, if you're fasting for a long time and you're taking insulin and you stop taking it because there's no food in your system and you're doing a 12 to 14 day fast, is there more damage caused by continuing insulin or stopping the insulin while you're fasting? And then what happens? Does your Would your body reset if you don't take insulin for a while? I mean, is that smart? Or, you, or you're fasting for 12 to 15 to 20 days. Let's say you have plenty of fat on your, on your body to do that. Is that something that would actually maybe fix it? Ask your doctor. Do your research. Look around online. You might be surprised at what you find. But at the end of the day, it's your time. You only have a certain amount. So if you're going to do something that you know, and you got to you got to think about it, folks, is is really putting tobacco smoke in your lungs good for you? Is putting alcohol in your stomach and your system good for you? I mean, good from it being like it's going to make you healthier or better or increase longevity or make it so you have less medical problems. All of these things you need to sit down and pencil out. What are you doing to sabotage your future? What are you doing to sabotage you being the best version of you? What is it? What is it that you're doing? Write that out. I don't know. And then send me a, a DM or shoot me a text message or whatever it may be. Just say, hey, Connor, this is what I'm doing. What do you think? Let's talk about it. Let's work this out. Comment below, comment on Facebook, comment on Instagram, comment on wherever I can fi find to put this. I hope everybody's wonderful. I appreciate you listening. I am Connor with Honor, fat torching over 50. And please, if I can help you, if you want to be on my accountability list, list let, me know. let me know how this resonated. Because it really, going into it, hearing that yesterday, it was like the blindfold came off, so did the gloves. Everybody have a fantastic week. Be true to yourself. And if you are sabotaging yourself, write it out and see the best way we can solve that together. I hope everybody's fantastic. I am Connor with Honor. Over and out.